There's a group of champions in League of Legends that can be summarized with one word, confusing. Their history within the game is full of left and right, up and down, forwards backwards thinking that makes me wonder if Riot can even make up their mind with this group. Definitely not the worst designed archetype, but the tenuous balance among its members occasionally falls through the cracks, thus leading to gimmicky builds that demand urgent nerfs the patch following. The inclusion of Zeri this past January had me thinking whether Riot is backpedaling on their desire to discontinue split damage champions. Prior to a release, there have been multiple changes made to others with equal parts physical and magic damage, forcing them into either one or the other to better judge their overall relative pressure. So seeing as it's pretty unclear as to what's going on, I think I should make a video talking about hybrid champions. What's up with them? Why is Riot changing their mind with them so much? Are they trying to phase them out of the game or keep them in? And what is the reason for their existence to begin with? When you start playing League, one of the first things you learn about is the existence of three types of basic damage, physical, magic, and true damage. Physical damage is mostly intertwined with attack damage, and barring ability modifiers is the default damage associated with a champion's auto attack, regardless of their class. The attribute designed to mitigate physical damage is armor. Magic damage ties in with ability power, exclusively increasing the potency of a champion's abilities. The counter stat for this form of damage is magic resistance. Then there's true damage, which ignores all incoming damage reduction or property that interacts with damage, including damage amplifiers as well, such as the bonus damage you would get from runes like Press the Attack or Last Stand. As its name suggests, true damage will always do the damage it says it will do. No more, no less. This means the only real measure to respond against true damage is through health-based sources like health itself or shields. Given that it's the most powerful of the three damage forms, it doesn't serve as a champion's default damage output and usually requires some kind of condition to be met in order to achieve that damage. As previously stated, almost every champion in the game defaults to either physical or magic damage, with any semblance of overlap being mostly design flavor. For example, if we were to look at Xin Zhao, he focuses on physical damage. Determination causes every third attack to do bonus physical damage. Three Talent Strike empowers his next three hits to do bonus damage as well. Wind Becomes Lightning is a two-part strike that both do physical damage, and Crescent Guard is a wide circular sweep that does physical damage too. However, Audacious Charge does magic damage and scales with ability power. Although with its low base damage and functional properties, it's merely there for the sake of being there. Xin Zhao is for all intents and purposes physical damage. That brings us to Hybrid Champions. Unlike other groups such as stat checkers or anti-carries, Hybrid is an actual term listed on the wiki. It refers to a champion who can build items designated for other classes as well as their own, allowing them to be much more flexible with their builds and diverse in combat effectiveness. Note that a Hybrid build is not always the most optimal and is only something that should be taken into account regarding its success in particular situations as well as the champion's scaling power with specific stats. There are two different classifications for a Hybrid Champion. The first is Scaling. While those like Darius and Riven gain absolutely zero benefit from stockpiling ability power, certain ones have the privilege of benefiting from both attributes. On screen is the list of every known champion who efficiently scales with either power metric. I'm guessing they haven't updated the page in a while seeing as we're missing a few new ones like Yone and Zeri, but it's important to remember that just because a physical damage champion has an ability power ratio, it doesn't necessarily make them a hybrid, as we previously went over with Xin Zhao there has to be a significant presence of both AD and AP scaling in their kits. Shaco's a good one to look through, as he finds virtually equal success in both attack damage and ability power. At the present moment, you can do well with either or. His physical properties come from Backstab, Deceive, and Two Shiv Poison, each having bonus attack damage ratios, thus allowing you to go a standard assassin build with items like Duskblade and Collector. He can also decide to go ability power if the situation demands it. Jack in the Box's duration and trap damage increase with AP. Two Shift Poison scales off of AP and does bonus damage based on AP as well if you strike someone from behind. Lastly, Hallucinate's Clone Explosion and Jackbox damage increases through AP. With this in mind, he's capable of serving as a control mage, using his clone and boxes to zone off enemies and disrupt engage. And I'm sure we can all agree, both are equally annoying. The second form of hybrid is that of damage. There are champions who are able to inflict a combination of physical and magic damage even if they scale off of only one or the other. They can do this either through their innate abilities or through supplementation of items that provide on-hit effects, such as Nasher's Tooth or Wit's End. A good case study would be the brand new Zeri. Prevailing Wisdom has her itemizing an on-hit spellblade focus build using proc-based mechanics like Runan's Hurricane, Titanic Hydra, Black Cleaver, and whatnot. But she does no shortage of magic damage on the side. Her modified basic attack does a hefty amount of magic damage, Ultra Shock Laser does magic damage, and Lightning Crash does as well, granting you bonus on-hit magic damage that can critically strike. 
Basically, you built AD items, but you still do a huge amount of magic damage. At the moment, there are no viable AP Zeri builds, but there might be some in the future. So by now, I'd imagine some of you might be asking, what about true damage? Does someone like Master Yi, who deals physical and true damage, be considered a hybrid? Technically, yes, but not many people consider it to be so, as true damage doesn't have a designated stat corresponding to it. Vayne and Master Yi do hybrid physical and true damage, but we haven't seen AP Master Yi since the Dinosaur Age. Despite mentioning items, there aren't any remaining hybrid items in the game though. The only ones still around are hybrid in the sense of on-hit damage like Nash's Tooth, Rage Blade, Wit's End, etc. But nothing that is explicitly meant to be used by a champion that uses both attack damage and ability power. Katarina and Akali Mains know exactly what I'm talking about. Hextech Gunblade was the final remaining holdout of the past hybrid days. Actually, it was really the only one. Not sure if there was any other item that gave both AD and AP. If there was one, it was probably way, way back in like Season 1 or Beta. Anyways, Gunblade was the cornerstone for a lot of hybrid damage dealers. It gave 80 ability power, 40 attack damage, had a passive 15% Omni Vamp or 5% for AoE damage, and an active that instantly zapped a nearby target for a chunk of magic damage and slowed them for 2 seconds. It was a pretty damn good item for Katarina, Kale, and Akali. Sometimes I would see it on Kaisa and Jax too. The removal of Gunblade was the main reason behind my thinking that Riot was trying to get rid of Hybrid from the game. Bringing us to the next point of discussion, why do Hybrid champions even exist in the first place? There really isn't one, it's more of a gimmicky thing than anything else. The idea of a champion who can access multiple build paths is definitely appealing in terms of flexibility. Say you locked in Kai'Sa and your team is full AP. You got a Darius top, Cossack's jungle, Kiana mid, and Alistar support. And no, you can't convince me that Alistar does enough magic damage, I don't care who you are. It may not be as much as a full-on AP champion like Ziggs bot, but Kai'Sa has the option to go AP with Nashers and stuff. In a general sense though, it lessens redundancy between champions of a respective class, and lowers how prone it is to rock-paper-scissors type matchups. The game would get rather stale if every assassin was physical damage or every tank was magic. By having hybrid champions who deal both physical and magic damage, trying to shut them down is not as simple as building a Thornmail or a Spirit Visage. You have to first figure out if the Twitch on the enemy team is going full crit or AP burst. In theory, it adds a bit more complexity to a game. How it applies in actual practice is where things get a bit agitating. On one hand, you don't want a game as sophisticated as League of Legends to come down to a battle of numbers or classes. But on the other, and I say this all the time, blurring the lines between what counters what or what is allowed to do what renders the game vulnerable to unintended side effects that arise from the implementation of new features or changes. By this, I mean balance. Forget hybrids, designing items or things to apply most efficiently to one class and not at all to others is borderline impossible for a MOBA since everyone is allowed to take everything. In the past at one point, items like Ravenous and Titanic Hydra were only allowed to be built on melee champions, but for the most part, nothing stops a Braum from going lethal tempo or Irelia from building Rapidon's death cap. In a game like Pokemon, each Pokemon is restricted to attacks and moves that are learnable to them, and thus it's easy to balance their stats and abilities because not every Pokemon can learn every move. Imagine giving Spiritomb or Sableye should in just Wonder Guard before Fairy types came out, literally invincible. Or imagine if you could teach the move Spore to any Pokemon in the game, that'd be pretty busted. League of Legends has no class-based limiters, or any limiters for that matter. What determines who builds what is a player construct according to the meta. As such, you can build whatever the hell you want or take any approach to the game that you want, and sometimes that entails a really broken strategy that may or may not have been intended by the developers. Case in point, Gore Drinker during summer of 2021. Everyone was building it. Fighters, assassins, skirmishers, basically every physical damage dealer you can think of. But it's not just in recent times. We had Ghostblade, Black Cleaver, ADC with Lucian, Misfortune and stuff. We had Ezreal going Runic Echoes. We had Tank Echo Top during the tank meta. None of these metas were really all that fun to play with as most of the time, there wasn't a clear idea of how to beat it. After all, we're not used to Twitch dealing thousands of magic and true damage with this passive and contaminate, right? Hybrid champions have always been a balance issue for the game. For one, it's hard to itemize against them. Against the Yasuo who does all physical damage, the easiest way to deal with him is by building Ninja Tabby, Thornmail, Randuin's Omen maybe. But against his brother Yone who does hybrid damage, what are you supposed to build exactly? Armor, magic resist? Ideally both, but there aren't that many items that give an adequate amount of each. Essentially, they have a natural advantage over those who are purely physical or magic damage. Moreover, through hybrid scaling, you get access to items that the developers weren't factoring into the equation when designing a champion. 
You guys remember Katarina early season 11, right? With the removal of Hextech Gunblade, the balance team saw fit to compensate her by making all of her abilities deal on-hit effects. Picking up a dagger with her passive would deal on-hit damage to everyone struck by it. Shunpo would do on-hit damage as well, and Death Lotus supplied on-hit effects with each dagger. This change spurred the rise of AD on-hit Katarina, who would build things like Blade of the Ruined King, Kraken Slayer, Ravenous Hydra, stuff like that. Sometimes she would even go AD Bruiser Katarina with Divine Sunder, seeing as, to my knowledge, the dagger would apply Spellblade effects to everyone, similar to Gangplank's Barrels. It was really obnoxious. She would be doing magic damage through her base damage, physical damage through on-hit effects, sometimes true damage if she went Kraken Slayer. We saw double tier Ezreal at one point. You would have all the bonus damage from Muramana and the massive shield from Seraph's Embrace back when it used to give a shield. No one expected Ezreal to be super tanky and do a lot of damage, or Kai'Sa when she first came out. She was an ADC who could build Zhonya's Hourglass without losing any DPS. At the time, it was considered unfair. In response to this, a lot of hybrid champions were gradually moved into being exclusively physical or magic. Akali and Corgi are two examples. For Akali, her Shitigan Flip's first and second hit used to both be physical, and the first hit of perfect execution was physical as well, meaning she would be able to do a huge amount of hybrid damage, thus giving her deceptively good dueling power against tanks and fighters for an assassin. Now, she's almost 95% magic damage. As for Corky, his passive divides his basic attack to deal 80% magic damage and 20% physical. It used to be half and half. Every time a hybrid build is discovered on a champion, it's almost immediately nerfed. AP Kai'Sa on release, AP Ezreal, AD Katarina, AP Shaco, AP Varus, AP Twitch, AD on hit, Teemo. Something that not many people think about when it comes to items especially, is that they're balanced under the impression that only X group of champions can build it. Gordringer was balanced with the notion that only fighters and divers would build it. Riot probably wasn't expecting assassins to build it since they thought assassins would go Duskblade, Eclipse, or Prowlers. Tank items like Old Sunfire Cape were designed around tanks. I'm sure the balance team didn't anticipate Echo, Fizz, Old Akali and such to go take it and start the crazy tank meta in Season 6. Hybrid champions receive a large amount of busts and nerfs to account for how many more things can cause them to become broken. Not a matter of if it will happen, but when. Zeri's initial release had no hotfix buffs or anything, but she instantly rose to top tier pick ban in not one, but three rolls. Top, mid, and bot. And a large part of that is due to her ridiculous magic damage on top of physical. If that's the case, should we dispose of all hybrid champions and make every champion either physical or magic damage? I'd say it depends. Being an AD champion with magic damage doesn't instantly make you stronger than a full physical damage one. It depends on how the distribution of hybrid damage is applied, and more importantly, whether that champion efficiently makes use of the items that synergize with it. For example, Jax. He does a respectable amount of magic damage, roughly a quarter or so, and his kit would suggest he's hybrid. Leap Strike is AP Scaling, Empower is Magic Damage with AP Scaling, Grandmaster's Might has Magic Damage with AP Scaling on every third hit, and he gains bonus magic damage from building ability power, but we haven't seen AP Jax in what feels like a lifetime because he really can't afford to do so. Jax is a skirmisher who needs to build items that augment his dueling potential and sustain damage. Thus, he needs a lot of health and durability to survive the early parts of a fight so he would build items like Death Stance, Sterex, Divine Sunder, Trinity Force, etc. Nasher's Tooth won't work on him all that well since it's too squishy, so in Jax's case his hybrid status doesn't really matter too much. The same can't be said for every champion though, it's a case by case basis. I don't think people really complain too much about Kale's hybrid damage because she loses to everyone under the sun in the early game, so I suppose it depends not on the amount of hybrid damage a champion does but how they apply it. Yona's hybrid damage is annoying because it's attached to someone who can gap close on you from two screens away and chain CC one shot you before blinking back to safety. Katarina and Akali are frustrating because you can't even touch them while they rip you to shreds. Ezreal and Corky are a nuisance due to their amazing neutral game, stuff like that. It seems that Riot's goal with hybrid champions is to allow them only as a last ditch option and not an interchangeable thing, which might explain why they keep going back and forth with it, so we'll see how things turn out. That's it for today though, what do you guys think about hybrid champs? Do you think they're bad for the game, or do you think people are overreacting whenever they see a hybrid champion with a different build? Feel free to share in the comments. For the time being, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe. Consider following me on Twitter, joining my Discord server, and checking out my previous champion group discussions if you haven't yet. But until next time, thank you all so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.